Hey everyone, with the loss of my right leg, many wonder how I'm still able to drive. This video showcases my experience with my car and how I'm still able to use it without my right leg. For below knee amputees, most don't have to consider making any changes to their vehicle. Given that they still have their knee joint, they're able to apply and control the pressure that they put on their pedals, something that above knee amputees can't do. Many people may choose to opt for the crossover method, and while this may seem to be an easy solution, I can only recommend it as a temporary one. Reason being is that when you use the crossover method as your primary way to drive, it becomes problematic over time. The use of a left foot accelerator keeps the body properly aligned, preventing awkward posture. This is why I opted on having modifications installed in my car to make driving for me easier and safer. But upon calling the modification shop, they told me they weren't able to put in any modifications unless they'd been prescribed by a certified driver rehabilitation instructor. So my next step was to get in touch with a driver rehab specialist. But before that, listen up, cause I'm about to let you in on something that I learned the hard way. Paying for a driver rehab specialist isn't cheap. The service that I choose to go with had been charging $185 an hour. And depending on your disability and the system you choose to learn, that can affect how much you actually end up paying for this driver rehab specialist. If you're living in the US, your state may have government funded programs that are actually able to provide assistance in covering costs like these. In my state, Texas, the Texas Workforce Commission is able to cover expenses like driver rehabilitation or home modifications related to mobility, but it takes a few months to even up to a year to get registered into their system. And this is something that I really wish that I knew in the hospital while I was doing my recovery or here even at home before I got my car. Which is why if you know that you want to drive again and need assistance from state programs like these, I highly recommend that you get registered with your system during your recovery so that by the time when you're up and able to start driving again, you don't have to wait long for assistance. With the cost squared away, I was given the choice to learn how to use hand controls or a left foot accelerator. I tried both, but ultimately ended up liking the left foot accelerator a lot better. Driving felt more natural, and I was able to keep both hands on the wheel. The accelerator that I chose to have installed was more sophisticated than most. Rather than a mechanical fixture that's simply bolted to the ground like these ones, what we have here is a new pedal that's electronically wired into the car's system and is activated via this switch. Doing so disables the regular accelerator and activates the left accelerator. That way, there's no accidentally using the original pedal when driving and can effectively be used as a footrest for your prosthetic leg. Anyone that wants to use the car regularly can do so by turning on the car like normal and ignoring the left accelerator. This has become my normal means for driving and it wasn't hard for me to learn at all. But what have your experiences been? Leave a comment below if you're considering a left foot accelerator or if you've opted for something different. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.